We're given that triangle ABCD is a rectangle. We also know that triangle BDFE is a rectangle, which will give us a whole bunch of right angles and a whole bunch of properties. We're also given that AB is 4, DE is 12. Well, opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent, so if AB is 4, DC is also 4. If DC is 4 and DE is 12, the remaining piece has to be 8. Now, we can recognize that here we have an altitude to hypotenuse situation because we have a right triangle, because this angle is a right angle because it's part of a rectangle, and we have a hypotenuse. Because or we have an altitude and we have a hypotenuse. It's a right triangle because of the uh, it's half of a rectangle. It's a hypot it's an altitude because this is a leg of this A B C D rectangle. So if I call this altitude H, I can say H squared equals four times eight, which is H equals the square root of four times eight which is the square root of 4 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, which is 4 root 2. Because opposite sides are congruent, this is also 4 root 2. Now I can look at this triangle to figure out the diagonal of this smaller rectangle. Instead of using 4 root 2 and 4, I might divide each of these by 4 and get 1 and root 2. This is going to be root 3. This triangle is 1 fourth the size of the screen triangle. So I've got to multiply this answer by 4. Now it's also being divided in 2 because the di diagonals bisect each other in a, in a rectangle. So this is going to be 2 root 3 and 2 root 3. In fact, all the halves of the diagonals will be 2 root 3. If this length is 4 root 3, then this length has to be 4 root 3 because opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent. Now I can take a look at this triangle. 4 root 3 and 12. Now again, I can reduce this triangle to, I can reduce it by a factor of 4, so this would be 3 and root 3, and find this missing side. So I got the square root of 6 for this small version of the triangle. But this triangle is one-fourth the size of this bigger triangle. So this is going to be 4 root 6. Now we know the diagonals of a rectangle bisect each other. So we know that if DE was 12, this would have to be 6. DW was 6, but this part's already 4, so this has to be 2. This is going to be 6, and this is going to be 6. For the second problem, we know angle F is a right angle, angle H is a right angle, angle FSG is congruent to angle HGJ. We know that FS is 12, FG is 16, and GJ is 5. Well, right away I see that we have one right triangle here. You might already recognize that this is just a, a multiple of our, one of our, our base triples. If I divide each of these by 4, I get 3 and 4, so this has to be 5. This triangle is 1 fourth the size, so this side would have to be 20.
Now, if I look at these two highlighted triangles, I know that they both have a right angle and they both have this angle, which means by no choice theorem, their third angles must be also be congruent. Which means that this angle with the single mark and this angle with the, the, uh, the caret have to add up to 90 because the three angles of a triangle add up to 90. This angle already is 90. This purple and this turquoise angle must add up to 90. Now this turquoise angle can also be found over here at angle G. Which means if we take a look at this straight angle, this purple angle and this turquoise angle together add up to 90. The entire angle is 180. So what's left over for this angle G is a right angle. So we did all of that, that thinking to justify why angle S, G, J was a right angle. Now that we know it's a right angle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem on that green triangle. Now I'm not going to use 20 and 5 because 20 and 5 can be reduced if I divide each side by 5. I've got 4 and 1. 4 squared is 16, 1 squared is 1, so this is the square root of 17. This triangle is one-fifth the size of this green triangle, so I have to multiply my answer by 5. Here we have trapezoid PCAK. PK is perpendicular to KC. KA is perpendicular to AC. AC is 8. KC is 10. But look at this triangle. I know I have a right triangle. Hopefully you've recognized that this is a multiple of a triple. If we divide each of these by 2, we have 5 and we have 4, so the missing side is 3. This triangle is one half the size of this yellow triangle, so this must be 6. It's double a three, four, five triangle. Now, interesting enough here, they don't tell you which sides are parallel. So these sides could be parallel, the purple, or the turquoise could be parallel. Let's first take a look at the purple. If these were parallel, then alternate interior angles would have to be congruent. If angle PKC is a right angle, this would have to be a right angle, which would be impossible because you can't have two right angles in the same triangle. So it's impossible for those sides to be parallel. It's got to be these sides. So that's a, a you know, short proof by contradiction. The reason why we have to do that, it didn't explicitly say which sides are parallel, so we have to actually figure it out. So now that we know the turquoise sides are parallel, we do know that alternate interior angles have to be congruent. So those angles have to be congruent. And we can conclude that these two triangles are similar by angle angle. Whenever we have similar triangles, we can set up proportions between corresponding sides. I might redraw them because they're not oriented the same way. This would be 6, this would be 10, this would be 8. This would be 10. I'm looking for PC, which is X, so I'll call that here, separate proportion, 6 is to 10 as 10 is to x. If 100 equals 6x, x, x equals 100 sixths, or 50 thirds. 